Welcome back to Advent of Cyber 3. Today's video will be about day 11. In day 11, the concept learned in this video is networking or the category is networking and we will be exploring how to interact with the Microsoft SQL Server database using an interactive database shell called Skewish. So basically the scenario here is that the or the owner of the database, Max Kitty, they have been locked out of their system and they need to get access back to the database. All they know is the old username and password of the database and they hope that the password hasn't changed so they can log in again to the database server. Now, the thing here is in order to discover where or on what port the database is running, we need to do nmap scan. After the nmap scan, we will try to interact with the database using using the skewish database shell so now the first question is about the port on which the microsoft sql server uh, is running but i'm gonna skip that because the uh the scan hasn't finished yet so i'm gonna need to wait for that so the next question is if the connection is successful you will get a prompt what is the prompt that you have received now we will start to interact with the database so basically i'm gonna minimize the window here for try hack me and explain on the command line so the first thing let's connect now to the microsoft sql server database so the syntax for that sqsh or sequish that's the name of the database shell we're using to connect to the microsoft SQL Server. Next, we define dash s dash or uppercase s to specify the host. In my case, the IP address that is hosting the database is 179.159. And then specify the username and password. So specify the username dash u s a dash p the password. So let me copy the password. The password is given by the way. And we connect now if the connection is successful you will receive the following prompt one and the one is enclosed by a row that's how we know you see you, that you have successfully connected um, the next thing we need first to understand what are the tables what are the databases so in the challenge we are told that the database name is reindeer and reindeer contains three tables names presents schedule now that's given in the challenge so in order to achieve the objective of this room we will need to retrieve records from the names table from the presence table and from the schedule table all right let's do that so we take that to the left and we start do doing that so select Let's assume that we want to retrieve records from the names table so to do that we it's quite the same formula or the same um, yeah the same formula when you retrieve records from a table contained or hosted or stored in mysql database select asterisk and then the define the table name from the table name is or the database name is really in there dots and then you type tbo and then we type the table names semicolon enter now that's not all we have to type go indicating that we are ready to retrieve the records so as you can see we have id first name last name and we have the records the id is actually the primary key in this database we're gonna explain what does that what does that mean but basically the id or the primary key in a relational database system such as ms sql is the is the is the uh, actually the key or the field that connects the databases to the tables together so they are relational or related right that's that's why they are they it's called relational database so the id actually is a primary key here and we have the first name an example is below dasher last name and nickname all right So let's see, let's check the questions. We can see four columns in the table displayed above ID, 
first name last name and nickname what's the first name of the reindeer of id9 now you don't need if you want if you don't want to to answer that from the command line you can just do that from the illustration here id9 has the first name rudolph and it marks the answer for this question the next question is check the table schedule what's the what is the destination of the trip scheduled on december 7th the exact same way here guys we copy that just change the table name the table name is schedule and we type go so the question is what is the destination of the trip scheduled on december 9th let's first understand the structure of this table so we have id we have date destination and notes so let's take the first one for example so that's the id that is the date and that is destination and here is the note so these are the trips or the date of the trips and the destination so basically we are asked to retrieve the destination of the trip scheduled on december 7 So if you scroll down, you can see there is one trip scheduled at December 7, December 7, 2021. Destination is break. So type break here. Okay. Check your table presents. What is the quantity available for the present power bank? Okay. Let's see. Now we paste the same command. Uh, nope. I have to recopy that again. table name is presents go okay we have id name and quantity so what what is the what is the quantity available for the present power bank so actually you can answer the question by looking at the name so you have you can see power bank and the quantity is 25 thousands okay now in the next step we will be exploring how to run commands on the system now in microsoft sql server we use the command xb underscore cmd shell and then we specify the command we're willing to run between single quotes and we run the command let's take an example here so xb underscore cmd shell between single quotes we specify who am i as an example command of course the semicolon and then we type go as you can see here the output is nt servers backslash microsoft sql server that is the user um, used now for the database so basically now any command that we will run on the system will be run as this user all right which is actually the uh, database user now let's see what is required there is a flag hidden in the Grinch users home directory what are its contents look at the hint look in directories under C users Grinch. let's copy that so there is a flag here we need to find out what is the file name that contains the flag and retrieve it so we're gonna have to run more than one command here so let's go back so now we know what is the or how to run commands using xpc and shell and between single quotes we specify the command so the first thing we type dir and then the directory so here we're willing to display the contents of the Grinch directory. Go. So these are, this is the content of the Grinch directory. As you can see, objects, contacts, desktop, documents, downloads, favorites, links, pictures. So the flag is contained somewhere 
in one of these directories most probably it's in the desktop what we can do here we can just the same command here okay it's gonna copy the backslash specify the desktop see if the flag contained file or containing file is there go let's see feedback ec2 feedback ec2 microsoft windows guide maybe it is in the documents and indeed it is in the documents folder this is the flag now to retrieve the flag we're gonna type change the command here instead of dir we type type and then we specify the file this will display its contents go and that is the flag so that was for the task or the day 11 let me check let me check the data check the nmap scan has it finished still running it, it's taking time because uh, as you can see i'm scanning for all ports so i'm sure you can you know how to get that it's only in map scan and you then you answer with the port running on the or the port in which the server is running on so basically that was the day 11 i hope you guys learned something from this video and see you later take care